Finally, we take a look at how to mix an unmixed liquid at the flick of a switch. Sandrine tells us more. Oil and water don't usually mix, but the new chemical sensitive to light has been added here to blend them together just as easily as it brought them together, it can also separate them out again. When exposed to UV light, the chemical changes its structure and becomes soluble in water. This causes two layers to form with the oil floating on top of the water chemical combo. This method should be cheaper than the current alternative which involves using high-energy centrifuges. Finally, we take a look at how to mix an unmixed liquid at the flick of a switch. Sandrine tells us more. Oil and water don't usually mix, but the new chemical sensitive to light has been added here to blend them together just as easily as it brought them together, it can also separate them out again. When exposed to UV light, the chemical changes its structure and becomes soluble in water. This causes two layers to form with the oil floating on top of the water chemical combo. This method should be cheaper than the current alternative which involves using high-energy centrifuges. If sea levels continue to rise, eventually the property becomes inundated and the real value of the property, the vast bulk of its value will be in the value of the land which of course is then unusable. And that's of course not insured by property insurance. So at that point a lot of waterfront landowners and banks and other financial institutions that have lent money against the value of those properties are going to find that they suffer very serious losses and it's not at all obvious at the moment who would compensate them. If sea levels continue to rise, eventually the property becomes inundated and the real value of the property, the vast bulk of its value will be in the value of the land which of course is then unusable. And that's of course not insured by property insurance. So at that point a lot of waterfront landowners and banks and other financial institutions that have lent money against the value of those properties are going to find that they suffer very serious losses and it's not at all obvious at the moment who would compensate them. The Mississippi River built this area, each year it would flood, it would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment, and the sediment would settle over the marsh, and over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time and under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta. The Mississippi River built this area, each year it would flood, it would bring in a lot of nutrients and a lot of sediment, and the sediment would settle over the marsh, and over time that sediment gets compacted. Imagine if you dig a hole in your yard and you put, and you have the pile of dirt next to it, and a week later that pile is going to be smaller because the dirt compacts. Well the same thing when the delta was built by the Mississippi, the delta itself compacts over time, 
and under a natural hydrology the river would bring sediments back out to those areas and deposit sediments on top of areas that are subsiding. And so we actually build land with an active delta. So, what we are going to talk about this evening is impacted by a big asteroid. There's tons of stuff on the Earth each day, about 100 times. Most of its fine dust is tiny, tiny particles. But what we are going to mainly concern this evening is bigger stuff. The bigger stuff is probably originally from an asteroid. There are millions of asteroids. There is the formation of the planets, probably because Jupiter's gravity prevented a planet from forming. So, what we are going to talk about this evening is impacted by a big asteroid. There's tons of stuff on the Earth each day, about 100 times. Most of its fine dust is tiny, tiny particles. But what we are going to mainly concern this evening is bigger stuff. The bigger stuff is probably originally from an asteroid. There are millions of asteroids. There is the formation of the planets, probably because Jupiter's gravity prevented a planet from forming. Dave Hackenberg, a beekeeper since 1962, can usually tell what killed his bees just by looking at them. If they're lying on the ground in front of a hive, it's probably pesticides, he says. If the bees are deformed and wingless, it's probably vampire mites. But last fall, Hackenberg saw something he had never seen before. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. Dave Hackenberg, a beekeeper since 1962, can usually tell what killed his bees just by looking at them. If they're lying on the ground in front of a hive, it's probably pesticides, he says. If the bees are deformed and wingless, it's probably vampire mites. But last fall, Hackenberg saw something he had never seen before. Thousands of his bee colonies simply disappeared. He was in Florida at the time, pulling the lids off some of his commercial hives. To his horror, they were all empty. Help us understand what entrepreneurship means to you. Is it just about starting companies? Not at all, Dina. I think, for me, Entrepreneurship is about transforming things by initiating by taking new ideas, by seeing them from concept into practice, so that the impact of the idea is larger than it would be. Let's say, if you just wrote a publication about it. So, I think it's finding creative ways to solve problems, to do new things, and I think that's what it's about. So, I think entrepreneurship can happen inside universities, I think we try to think of ourselves as an entrepreneurial university. We take risks, we try new things, and I think that's an important asset for anyone who wants to lead an organization or lead change.
Help us understand what entrepreneurship means to you. Is it just about starting companies? Not at all, Dina. I think, for me, entrepreneurship is about transforming things by initiating by taking new ideas, by seeing them from concept into practice, so that the impact of the idea is larger than it would be. Let's say, if you just wrote a publication about it. So, I think it's finding creative ways to solve problems, to do new things, and I think that's what it's about. So, I think entrepreneurship can happen inside universities, I think we try to think of ourselves as an entrepreneurial university. We take risks, we try new things, and I think that's an important asset for anyone who wants to lead an organization or lead change. UK has an aging population as a result of decline in birth fertility rate and mortality rate. This has led to a declining proportion of the population age under 60 and an increasing proportion age 65 and over. In every year since 1901, with the exception of 1976, there have been more births and deaths, and the population has grown due to natural change. Until the mid 1990s, this natural increase was the main driver of population growth. UK has an aging population as a result of decline in birth fertility rate and mortality rate. This has led to a declining proportion of the population age under 60 and an increasing proportion age 65 and over. In every year since 1901, with the exception of 1976, there have been more births and deaths, and the population has grown due to natural change. Until the mid-1990s, this natural increase was the main driver of population growth. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. The upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty. The Earth is warming. Almost all the Arctic summer ice may have melted by the end of the century, claims the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change the IPCC. The upside access to an estimated quarter of the world's oil and gas resources and the opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. The downside, the Arctic wilderness is lost as neighboring countries, Denmark and Greenland, Russia, Canada, Norway, and the United States all race to share in the bounty. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking as we mentioned, 
is what's called the Ostnet system. The hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. No one likes to be spied upon, to have their personal information stolen, or their computers hijacked to become part of what's called a botnet. Botnets are networks of computers that have been infected by viruses called malware. It could happen to you. These hijacked computers are being secretly used without the owner's permission, for criminal and espionage purposes. Botnets are one of the biggest problems in computer security today. One of the scariest examples of computer hacking, as we mentioned, is what's called the Ostnet system. The hijacking of computer networks in the offices of the Dalai Lama and thousands of other computers around the world. I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. I think it's often underestimated the connection between doing research, live research, and teaching undergraduates and the undergraduate programs. Because, of course if you're working at CERN on a frontier experiment you come back to give a lecture, you're buzzing with activity of what's going on your new results. It just makes the whole lecture much more interesting for students. It's always really exciting to look ahead at new science and what might happen in the future. I must say, lots depends on what we find in the next few years at the start of the Large Hadron Collider. We are expecting to find very many new phenomena. So the thing we'll want to be building in 10 years time will depend on what we find. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start. This is one thing we can say about babies. Human babies compared to babies of other species is that we are entirely dependent on our carers to bring us up and for us to survive. And so it's very important for babies to get into relationships with somebody who's going to look after them well. So, biology has meant that babies and the adults are geared up to be in relationship with each other from the start.
and one particular crop, almonds in the US and now in Australia, is transforming the world of beekeeping and of bees. What has happened is that something serendipitous came along that people found out, that doctors found out that almonds are good for you, they are actually a food that is normally considered a confection, but it's good for you. The almond board got a very aggressive promotion going on for almonds. I just heard recently, they send out sales reps to cardiologists at hospitals to promote the heart benefits of almonds, so they go right to the doctors to do this. So they leave no stone unturned in a very good promotion of almonds, and it's legitimate promotion because they are a healthy food. So what's happened is worldwide. Almond sales have taken off. And one particular crop, almonds in the US and now in Australia, is transforming the world of beekeeping and of bees. What has happened is that something serendipitous came along that people found out, that doctors found out that almonds are good for you, they are actually a food that is normally considered a confection, but it's good for you. The almond board got a very aggressive promotion going on for almonds. I just heard recently, they send out sales reps to cardiologists at hospitals to promote the heart benefits of almonds, so they go right to the doctors to do this. So they leave no stone unturned in a very good promotion of almonds, and it's legitimate promotion because they are a healthy food. So what's happened is worldwide. Almond sales have taken off. My name is Posey D and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands, I work with a shoe company, and we work with a team of young people across Europe, who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, dunksers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like oh god, have to go to work, again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. My name is Posey D and I now work in sports marketing and branding events and team management. We work with big brands, I work with a shoe company, and we work with a team of young people across Europe, who are all professional surfers, snowboarders, dunksers. And we send them on trips, we organize adverts, we organize magazine shoots, and try and create an image around the shoe brand. I've come from quite an unconventional background. I was a professional snowboarder myself for three or four years, full time, so I'm not used to sitting in an office, I'm not used to going to work every day. And still I've only been doing this job for a year, and sometimes I'm like oh god, have to go to work, again, that's ridiculous. But it's always different, so it's fine. And some weeks it's quite quiet, other weeks it's totally full on and really challenging. Well, 3D printing started in the 1980s. 
At that time it used to be referred to as rapid prototyping, where companies were able to use it, for instance, to visualize the shape of the component or a component they're about to make. But then during the last 10 years the technology has evolved from the prototyping level to the manufacturing level, specifically when it started to move from plastics to metallic materials. My interest specifically is in the field of high-value additive manufacturing, meaning that we use additive manufacturing to produce components for aeroplanes or for cars. Well, 3D printing started in the 1980s. At that time it used to be referred to as rapid prototyping, where companies were able to use it, for instance, to visualize the shape of the component or a component they're about to make. But then during the last 10 years the technology has evolved from the prototyping level to the manufacturing level, specifically when it started to move from plastics to metallic materials. My interest specifically is in the field of high-value additive manufacturing, meaning that we use additive manufacturing to produce components for aeroplanes or for cars. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram, but we are really interested in the underlying message. Numbers and diagrams are highly abstract and condensed summaries of the world. They require a degree of mental effort to bridge the gap between them and the aspects of the real world they stand for. Approach them slowly and with care, allowing yourself time to get the feel of what you are looking at. Don't assume you already know what you are looking at. It's easy to be distracted by the surface appearance of a diagram but we are really interested in the underlying message.